Hello again, my beauty enthusiasts. Today, um, I'm here to share with you my favorite method of installing clip-in extensions. This is a 100 gram set of Platinum Blonde, beautiful silky straight, human hair, 100% human hair by Renature. Um, it comes with four individuals, clips. It comes with um, two double, two triple, and one quadruple clip-in. So, um, I started using extensions when I was growing out a pixie that I did not at all like. So, um, I had very short hair. I was told it was not long enough to even have extensions. But, over time I figured it out. Where there is a will, there is truly a way. And it can be done. Let me show you what I mean. So, I like to use these little rubber bands that one would use for, say, cornrows underneath where I'm going to be placing my clip because my hair is very straight, very fine, and it's not too grippy. Therefore, it will very easily drop my clip right out of it. So, this makes sure that never happens. They will stay firmly in place if you use this method. It just takes a lot of grabbing back and forth since you're doing this around such a small slice of hair. But it will save you a world of trouble in, if you have fine hair as well. If not, you could always use the back combing method, which is where you would just take your comb, tease up to the root area on just a very small piece of hair that you know will be directly under your extension. I like to use dry shampoo just to provide extra grip. Okay, so um, in the back. First, you need your plan. <laughs> So for my nine piece extensions, I like to do something like this. It works great for short to medium hair or any breakage that might be at the top. If you start with your two double clips in a V formation, like so. So if this is the crown of your head, you're going to put one of your two clips here and the other here. And then we're going to kind of stagger these single clips to frame your face, okay? So let's start with that. Um, so I've started one of my... Actually, I think I'm going to go ahead and do something I've never done before. I am going to use the one to anchor both in the back as a pivot point. So it's about to say right here on my head. We're going to open these up. You can spray them with um, dry shampoo or hairspray if you'd like to so get them a little extra. I say I'm using Not Your Mother's. It was just something I got at Walgreens in the travel section on the fly. So, um... It works as well as any other. It's unscented. I like that because I like my perfume and other things to be my main scent. Um, unless it's a scent that complements my perfume. I don't like it to be overpowered is what I guess I mean. Now I'm going to take my next one. I'm going to take a slice of hair where I know this clip will be landing. I'm just going to be right here. Just a straight, thin, tiny slice. Band it up as much as we can, as tightly as you can without straining your elastic. Make sure you don't get any free, you know, extra hairs that are loose um, from another area in there because it will create pulling. You just want to make your parts very clean and make sure you only banding the hair which you intend to band. That's why I like to start kind of in the middle like so. That way um, I can pull it down tighter when I'm done, but I'm also more in control of what stray hairs enter or do not enter. Okay. So there we go, it's nice and tight. So I'll just pull this down now to the scalp area. Oops, wow, I got that one good, huh? <laughs> Okay, let's pull this all the way down to the scalp. Yep, okay, very good. And I'm going to take the other side right now and put the clip in a scooping motion. Like at a 90 degree, like put the clip like this to your head. And then you would just scoop into your hair and then clip. That way you have a nice tight placement, very close to the scalp, very secure that way. And you just comb it into your hair, you know, supporting it at the roots so you're not to yank at it too much, okay? Work it into your hair. 
So I'm going to grab for the other side my other double clip. Here we are. Thank you for tuning in again if you're back. Um, if not, I'm Heather. I'm a beauty enthusiast who has chosen to experiment with my YouTube channel and get some information that I've gathered over the years from cosmetology school as well as just loving makeup since I was age eight, loving hair since I was age eight. And over the years, I've just um, found a lot of life hacks or tricks or styling or beauty tips I think that most of you might find very helpful. Or if you have any for me, I would love to hear about it. Please leave in the comments. I'm always learning. Um, and what better place to learn from each other than on YouTube. So um, if you see anything along the way that maybe sparks an idea in your mind, please share. Um, I have a very curious mind and I love to hear so many wonderful tips or other perspectives. Even if you disagree, that's okay. Um, you know, it's great to see, be objective in everything we know and in beauty, you can never have enough tricks, tips, or hacks, if you ask me. So I'm by no means um, professional. I did graduate cosmetology school at Southern Nevada University of Cosmetology back in 2007. However, I've continued to pursue cocktail waitressing in casinos and I've made it all the way to the top of my favorite company on the Las Vegas Strip. Currently I'm furloughed but I will be back soon and I can't wait to be a part of all that after this time, whole pandemic is clearing up and life can return to normal. We've had all this time to hone in on our beauty skills, right ladies? All right. So at which point I'm going to do, I should have brought a mirror. I am doing this with no mirror. Oh my goodness. Silly. That's great though, huh? It's good for me. Develop my uh, sense of touch and hand coordination. And these, I've done this so many times, so many ways that I literally could probably do it in my sleep. Only because at first I hated talking about extensions. The way I got into the game was very traumatizing to me. I was in a beauty show. I used to do that often. I was a bookkeeper for uh, someone who was very high up in a company that we may all know. One uh, on the level of, let's say, Tony and Guy, what are your basic names? Paul Mitchell. Um, Mm, why am I drawing a blank right now? Help me out here. Next is, of course. Um, oh, uh, Joyco. Uh, someone in that league, okay? I don't want to call anyone out because it certainly wasn't the company's fault themselves. Gave me an unexpected pixie cut is how this all began. I had shoulder length hair. It was all natural. I'd never worn extensions in my life. It was about to here. Every time I've done a beauty show before, they did a great job with my hair, but my hair was much longer, so they had a lot of um, room to express their art for their trade. Um, I guess this time I had not considered, plus Miley Cyrus had made the pixie a very um, hot look that year, and uh, they perform your haircut on stage so that other people in the business can learn from and be inspired by. And it's always just been a great time for me. Um, you get your hair cut colored for free, you know, you get treated like a star, it's a lot of fun. Well, this one time, um, I went from shoulder length, which I had painstakingly grown back out um, when I'm used to having longer, much longer hair. It was already platinum, so I guess the only way they had to go was to pixie it to make a dramatic change and uh, I was mortified I left the stage and just was in shock really I'd never had my hair that short and I love pixies I have my friend Misty has this beautiful pixie it looks great on her I mean so flattering and it didn't look terrible it's just not what I had if you want to pixie your hair that should be a personal decision right much like a tattoo or it's just such a drastic change not permanent but it feels permanent at this time 
So I got thrust into extensions that way. But now that I'm in here and I've learned as much as I have, I can't imagine no matter how long my hair gets or thick it becomes, I think I will always wear extensions now because no matter how long or thick your hair is, you could always have longer or thicker or just highlights or a different color. It's just the um, extensions have come such a long way in recent years and it just makes it too much fun for me to resist, I guess, because I'm very creative and I see all this as art in a way. Um, hair design, you know, makeup, artistry. It's just a creative outlet for self-expression, in my opinion, for me. So I find it exhilarating and uh, empowering and exciting. And the more I learn, the more fulfilling it becomes. So I'm just here to share what was a bad experience with you. Because from that, I learned so many good things. It really did change my life for the better. And um, I hope that maybe some of you who are new to extensions or just like to hear other perspectives even, or have some perspectives for me, or maybe going through something similar to what I went through, or who knows what reason you may be using extensions. Maybe it's just for fun. Um, I know when I was looking how I was going to do it, there's a lot of hard work involved. So let me share my findings with you and please return the favor. Now, so we've done these three, I mean, well, four. And so now what we're going to do is the four, set of four right here, and then a two to complete the head almost. So there's going to be like six clips going around the occipital bone, you know, right in this area here, ear to ear, or hairline to hairline, I should. I'm going to start, um, I'm going to leave the hairline, but that's really about it. And then I'm going to start here with a piece like right under here like this okay just a straight across piece make sure there's nothing pulling and I'm going to band it off to support the clip script or you can do back combing I'll demonstrate that on my single pieces in case you have um, hair that's more coarse than mine or more grippy for whatever reason has texture to it so that you don't need to do this part or don't want to do this part. There's many ways to do this and this is just the way I find most secure for my type of hair. So I'm going to um, pull this up to the scalp now, okay? And now I'm going to estimate where, it, well, I'm going to map out where this is going to hit. So with my first clip, we're gonna go here. We're gonna have a second clip here. So let me just grab some hair from that area. That is exactly even, you know, you want straight lines on this. You don't want it to be going up and down and all. So straight across your head, which is why I did my clean parting beforehand. Um, here we go. I'm just banding off this next one where the second clip will be like so okay which will bring me to my you want to make sure that that your tiny little ponytails you're making are angled downward so that you don't have any pieces of ponytail ends that are trying to poke out and show, okay? It's very annoying if that were to happen. So this everything would be right here. So about in the middle of the back of my head. Challenging with my fingernails as well. Let's see, I'm caught around them. Okay, here we go. We're gonna pull it close to the scalp. 
and um, that's three. I need one more. Let's just make it. I love Renature hair. Every color I get, they gave me a beauty consult on this one since I changed the color of my hair. It's dead on. And I even went and put it back in some low lights because I just feel more comfortable with a dimensional blonde rather than a flat blonde when the length is as it is. Personally, matter of preference. Not that it's right or wrong way to do that. You express yourself any way you see fit. Um, I just like to have dimension in longer blondes, shorter blondes. I like to have, have very one dimensional, one color, I mean, very bright, like shocking platinums or a rose gold or a copper, very statement color uniform when the hair is shoulder length or shorter. That's just me personally. As the hair gets longer, I prefer it to have dimension um, to it um, rather than one flat color that just goes for days. You know, it just becomes very overwhelming for me. I feel like your eye almost wouldn't know where to fixate. So I like to make it an ombre or a low lights or incorporate dimension somehow. There's many ways to do that. And that's just my personal thoughts about how things look for me. Now, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, of course. And everyone's different, and we're all individuals, and that's what makes us all so beautiful. So, of course, these are nothing more than my own ideas for myself. If you like them, that's great. If you have another way, please share. I'd love to hear it and see your pictures um, of your extensions and ideas or hair color. So I really would like to hear from you. Um, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe so that you can see my breaking content as I am really beginning to pick up steam, I mean pick up speed and really starting to enjoy this whole YouTube process um, more than I thought I would. So it's a lot of fun and I'm looking forward to more and more of you interacting with me and uh, so I can hear from you and continue to always learn. Never stop learning. Knowledge is power. Okay, so now I have, I'm going to use a one piece here. Actually, I don't have as much area as I'd expected, okay? So that's all right. You just um, modify your plan as needed. So I have a four piece going around so far that you see here. Okay, and I'm going to now connect just a single, just to make it kind of an ear to ear for me. Make sure I'm nice and level. Yes, I am. Okay. So my next video, I plan to show you, are you all on to hyaluronic acid yet for your skin? Actually for your hair as well, uh, for the scalp it's very healthy. That is my latest beauty find. I might be a little behind the times, but wow, wow on that one. So um, I've been using hyaluronic acid serum a lot lately and I feel like it's just really made my skin glow and be more plump and full and just make me feel so much better brighter and more youthful looking so I'm like I'm starting to want to use it all over my whole body and my hair on my scalp I've heard it's great for your scalp promotes hair growth um, so being a serum you know it could become it, it's not very expensive at all hyaluronic acid surprisingly because um, it's invaluable but I am they sell the capsules of the powder so I thought why not DIY that so I found a great, um, on Pinterest I found a great recipe. So in my next video I plan to be doing a how to make your own hyaluronic acid serum for hair and skin of the face and body. That way you can slather it all the way up without any fear of running out or you know, it's just cents on the dollar to make your own. And plus you have the pride of saying I made this, I love that feeling. So. Well, so important last layer of hair. So it's going to be this um, three clip here, and I'm going to take it right along where my baby hair is. Put my rubber. Um, I'm going to roll this 
whole area and twist it in with rubber bands, much like a French braid. If you are good at cornrowing, I recommend you do that. But this is the part that likes to stick out and give away the length difference in your hair from your extension. So, what I do is I grab the first one, band it like I normally would. Okay. Pull it to the scalp. Make sure there's no loose hairs in it. I feel like I have a hairline. Yeah, I do. I do have that. Okay, got it out. And then I'm going to take that hair. I'm going to twist it with the a piece of hair next to it. And I'm going to keep grabbing more hair to twist around it and tight to the scalp. Then around the middle somewhere, I'm going to band it again. I could do a cornrow, it just, it's not necessary for me. It doesn't, it holds just as well like this. And this is far easier, but if you can bang out a cornrow real fast in your own hair, I end up, of course, be ideal. However, this will do just fine for the rest of us for the braid challenge. Okay, and then from the other side, you're gonna wanna take the remaining hair that's loose after you've sectioned off just the last row and you're going to twist it the opposite way, away from your ear, that way it's not going to stick out and show. Then you have the tail of the middle one, and I just start twisting those, and then I start banding those together, and I'm going to make a tiny little loop, or bun if you will, where you don't pull it all the way through, just to keep it tucked away neatly, or you could leave it loose. Let's just leave it hanging down today, okay? Like regular, like this. See? So all the hair is just twisted into one line, and you take your last piece of hair here, open all your clips, spray them with your grip of choice, whether it be hairspray or dry shampoo, and then begin, let's do it like left, right. So clip this in behind one ear, right at the hairline, okay, and once again that scooping motion, so you're going to bring it in at a... 90 degree angle to your scalp and you're just going to scoop as if you're scooping ice cream upside down until it's parallel to your scalp. Gives you a very, very close fit that way. And the opposite side right beneath the ear and scoop in and clip. And then comb. So now we have no length differences giving away at the end sticking out from under your ears like it. that's such a nuisance. So that solves that problem for you. And you just kind of comb it all out. Oh, it's still attached here. Uh oh. <laughs> what did I do? Oh, it's just one little piece was um, stuck in my. Alrighty, so we're just gonna give this good, good comb here to smooth out all my hair and see how everything is blending. Um I believe we have our finished product, guys. Let's see. Oops, I have a little hair that got stuck. It's okay, I just loosened it out from the band. It was in a place it didn't belong. No biggie. Just very carefully remove it if you have any um, pieces of hair that are stuck. And secure any clips that may be affected by that. And just smooth that beautiful silky Rapunzel locks out and hello new hair so this is our runniture once again in platinum blonde shade number 60 100 gram nine piece set of clip-in human hair extensions on Amazon in the runniture store and you cannot beat this value nor this quality and I'm um, I have already been wearing these. I just took them out to install them after I did my low lights. So let me just um, show you what, we're, what our hair looks like once it's installed from front and back really quick. So here we go. And in the back, I hope I have everything laid down. I haven't even checked, so I'm assuming, oh, I feel something here stuck, right? 
Okay, wait, let me just come through that. Like I said, flying blind, but it's nice that this procedure is so easy, you don't even need a mirror, honestly. All right, so here we go. In the back, we have our leg here, and on our side, I'm assuming all is smooth. If not, please forgive. All right, so how does it look? Let me see. My turn. Oh, yeah. This will do. Absolutely beautiful. As always, thank you, Rancher, for helping me have the hair I want, even in times of financial crisis such as these. Everyone should have Rancher hair, and they should have as much of it as they want. And as many colors as you want, you can afford to change your look anytime you like with their hair. I was paying three, four times this for hair that was equal or lesser quality, so 